Today on our 2013 Smart for 2, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Easy Base Plate Kit with removable arms, part number 5228-5-1. So here's what our base plate looks like fully installed, and this is going to allow us to flat tow our smart car behind our motorhome and safely get down the road. Now it's going to feature what they call an easy twist lock. We just simply twist it, and we'll be able to remove it. And then if we were to decide to remove our safety chain loop, there's not going to be that much there and the hidden bracket is going to be much more appealing for the looks of our car. Then to install it, simply put it in, twist it, and you're ready to go. There's no pins or any locks that are needed. Our base plate is compatible with quick disconnect and all Roadmaster tow bars. Now our base plate features an all steel construction with a black powder coat finish so it's going to continue to look nice the entire time and it is a custom fit application. Now, there is no welding required. There is some minor drilling, but there is some body panels that we are gonna to need to remove. Now, let's show you how we get it in place. Before we begin our installation, we're gonna to need to unpackage all of our hardware, and the manufacturer does recommend the use of red Loctite on all the bolts. So I'm gonna take my Loctite, and I'm gonna apply a small amount onto each one of our bolts, that way it has a little bit of time to set up while we prep our car. To begin our installation, we're going to need to open the hood on our smart car. Now if we come to the grill right below the hood, on each side we're going to have a small tab. Now that tab we're going to be pushing towards the center, which will release it. And we're going to rotate that out. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now with the arms rotated towards the center, I'm going to push in, which will release the hood. And then we can lift up and slowly pull it away and it'll unclip. Now we're going to need to remove the fastener holding the strap that holds our hood to our car. Now I'm going to be using a T25 Torx bit to remove that bolt. Now we can set the hood aside. Now if we come right below our headlight, we're going to have a push pin fastener right here. Now I'm going to be using a flathead screwdriver to get it out. Now if we come up, we're going to want to pop out the center section. Once we have the center section popped out, we'll make sure it's popped out all the way. And it may help to use a trim panel tool. We'll make sure the center is all the way out. And then we can come behind the back section and pop that out. Now we're going to repeat that process on the other side as well. Now right where our headlight meets our fender towards the top here, we're going to have another Torx bit. And again, I'm going to be using a T25 to remove that. And we're going to have another one on the other side as well. Now, if we come to the center section, we're going to have one Torx fastener again on each side of our grill, and I'm going to be removing those using a T25 as well. Next, if we come to the driver's side where our antenna is, if we grab it towards the bottom at the base, we're going to twist it in a counterclockwise motion to remove the antenna. And we can go ahead and set this aside for now. Now, if we open the doors on our vehicle, at the very top, we're going to have a Torx bit fastener, and then if we come down to the middle, we're going to have a push pin fastener, and we're going to need to remove those. Now for the Torx bit fastener, I'm going to be using a T25 Torx bit to remove it. Now once we have the center removed with the Torx bit head on it, there's going to be an outer piece that we're going to need to take out as well. Now you can use a flathead screwdriver or a panel tool to remove that. This is going to pop out, and then we're going to remove the push pin fastener in the middle. Now this is just like the one before, we're going to need to pop out the center section to release it, and then we can get the whole push pin out. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now right where we just moved our fastener from the top here, we're going to have this plastic panel. Now we're going to pull towards the back in an upward motion and away from our vehicle and it should unlock it. So we can grab the end, and it'll pop right out. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Behind the cover, we're going to have two fasteners holding it in place. Now the one towards the front of the car is going to be a T25. Now the one in the back here, that's going to be a T27 torque bit. Then we can move to the other side and remove the other side as well. If we come to the back of our vehicle, right in front of our tire and the wheel well area, we're going to have two push pin fasteners holding the lower balance on our vehicle. We're going to need to remove those and again we're going to, need to pop out the center section and then we can get out the larger section behind it. 
Now that we have this side removed, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. On each side, we're gonna to need to come to our rocker panel, and if we reach underneath, we're gonna to wanna to pull out and away from our vehicle so that it unclips from underneath. And once those clips are released, we're gonna to wanna to slide our rocker panel towards the back to get it out the rest of the way. And then we can remove it and set it aside. Now, if the clip comes off with your rocker panel, we can go ahead and pop it out, and we're just gonna put them back in place. Now, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. Now, if we come to the front tire, right behind it, we're gonna have another T25 Torx bit that's gonna be attaching our fascia to the bottom corner here. And we're gonna need to remove both sides. Now, underneath the front of our vehicle, right where the paint stops, Underneath, we're gonna have two clips that are holding it in place. Now we're gonna need to pop those out so we can get the fascia off. So we can just come underneath and slightly pull and pry just so that it releases that clip. And we'll do the same thing for the other one as well. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna to begin to remove our fascia. Now if we come to the top corner here, right by our lights, we're gonna pull away slightly. And I do wanna recommend that you pay attention because our marker lights need to be disconnected. So if we come to our light here, we're gonna turn it about a quarter turn and it'll release the light bulb. Now we are gonna have a few push pins here that are gonna hold it in place. So if we just lift up slightly on each side, we should be able to carefully remove our fascia and we can set it aside for safekeeping. With the fascia removed, we are gonna need to lift the front of our vehicle and get the tires off. Now, I recommend lifting it by the subframe or the pinch weld here, opposed to underneath on the control arm. That way we just have a little bit more room up front. Now we're gonna need to have three lug nuts that we're gonna need to remove. Now I'm gonna be using a 15 millimeter socket to remove these. Now I just wanna remind you that when you take that last one out, these are lug studs, so there's not gonna be anything holding the wheel on. So you wanna make sure you have a firm grip before you take that last bolt out and we can set our wheels aside. And we're gonna take the other front tire off as well. Now on the inside of our fender here, we're gonna have a push pin fastener that's holding our fender liner to our core support. Now we're gonna remove that, and again, I'm gonna push out the center section, which will release the back. And we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side as well. Now directly behind our strut, we're gonna have a wire. Now that's gonna be our ABS wire. Now against the fender liner, we're gonna have an attachment point that it's clipped into. We can pull that out. And now we're actually gonna take our ABS clamp here. And we're gonna work it loose a little bit first. But once it is loose enough, released from the liner here, we're gonna unscrew this by screwing it counterclockwise. Now we're gonna repeat that on the other side as well. Now at the front of our core support here, we're gonna notice that we have two small Torx bit fasteners. Now that's holding on our ABS sensors on the back side. Now we're gonna to need to remove these, but before we do, I wanna mention that we don't wanna unplug the sensors, and you especially wanna make sure the key is out of the ignition because we don't wanna trip an airbag sensor code and have to get it reflashed. So I'm gonna be using a T25 Torx bit to remove those bolts. Now we're gonna remove the other one as well. Now we are gonna to need to remove the bolts holding our core support in place. Now here on the driver's side, if we find our horn here, and we follow the bracket down, there's gonna be a bolt holding that in place, and it's also holding our core support in place. Now, it's gonna be hard to see, but just over to the side a little bit and down, we're gonna have another bolt. So we're gonna have one here on the side, and then one at the very bottom here. Now, we're gonna to need to remove all three of those bolts on each side. Now, I'm gonna be using a six point 10 millimeter socket to remove those bolts. Now, once we remove the bolt with our horn attached, we can just set our horn aside. That way it doesn't get in the way of anything. Now that we have this side done, we can move to the other side and get that done as well. Now, before I remove this last bolt, I do wanna mention that's the only thing holding our core support on. So you wanna make sure you have a firm grip before you pull that bolt out. 
Now we're gonna have a couple lines here. We're gonna need to pop these clips off of the core support. And that's what's holding our ABRAG sensors on. So we're gonna pop those out and then we can remove our core support and put it on a workbench. Now we have a core support here. We're gonna need to rotate it so that it's upside down or that the tab here with the small ear on it is pointing towards the ground. Now we can take the main receiver brace for our base plate. We're gonna take that L-shaped bracket and point it towards the ground. We're gonna slide it over our core support and then we're gonna rotate it so that we can fit it nice and snug up against our core support. Now we're gonna to wanna to make sure this is butted up tight against our core support. So I'm gonna grab a clamp and clamp it in place. So this is what it should look like once we put our clamp in the middle. Now I do want to mention on the side here where our L brackets are, our base plate should be contacting our core support at the top here, but where our L bracket is with the holes in it, there should be a slight gap close to about a half inch, and that's how you know you have position correctly. Now if we come to the top of our base plate, we're going to have a couple holes, and now we're going to need to drill all the way through using this as a template and drilling through our core support. Now I'm gonna use a pilot drill bit, a small drill bit to start out with, and the final hole will be enlarged to a half inch. Now we do have an option to drill through our base plate here and then through our core support, or we can take a paint marker, or whatever we have available to mark it, and then unclamp and remove our base plate and just drill on our core support. I clamped my core support to my workstation, and then I made a center punch mark, making it a little bit easier to get to so I can drill it out. Now, once you get through the first section of our core support, you wanna make sure your drill bit's straight and drill straight down. Now we can come back and enlarge the hole to a half inch. Now I'm gonna be using a step drill bit to drill out my hole to a half inch. That way it makes it a little bit easier because I can go from each side. Now that we've drilled through both sides, we're gonna take our half inch bolt and make sure that it fits through the hole. Now we can go ahead and start drilling on the other side. With both of our holes drilled, we're gonna find our spacer here. It's gonna be the larger of the two in our kit and we're gonna slide it into our core support and we're gonna line up the holes that we just drilled and then the ones in our base plate. Then we can take our half inch bolt that's five inches long and we're gonna slide it through the base plate through the spacer and then out the bottom. Now on the bottom, we're gonna be using a lock washer and a nut to attach it, but we're gonna to need to put in this tapered spacer. Now, as you can see, one side is gonna be slightly larger or thicker than the other. Now we're gonna to wanna to set our washer on there so that the split end is on the short end so it's nice and even when we tighten everything up. So we can slide our spacer and our lock washer in place and then we can attach our nut on the bottom. Now we're going to leave this kind of loose right now to make sure we can get our lock washer in the correct position and again you want to make sure the split end or the thicker end of the washer is on the smaller end of our spacer and we're going to repeat that on the other side as well. Now on the bottom here we're going to take our support brace here and we're going to slide it over that half inch bolt we just put through and then we're going to follow it up with a tapered spacer and we're going to slide that over our bolt. It's going to be followed by a lock washer and then we're going to take our half inch nut and secure it to the bottom. Now on the side of our brace here we're going to have two holes that are going to match up. We're going to take our 3 8 bolts and we're going to slide it through and that's going to be followed by a lock washer and then a nut on the end. Now we're going to repeat that process for this hole here as well as the two other remaining holes. Now that we have this side assembled, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now using a three quarter inch wrench and socket, I'm gonna snug up my half inch hardware. Now for my three ace hardware, I'm gonna come back with a nine sixteenths wrench and socket and snug those all up. Now using a three quarter inch wrench and socket, I'm gonna come back and torque my half inch hardware to the specified amount in the instructions. And we'll repeat that for the remaining hardware. Now if we come to the spot in the front of our vehicle where we removed our core support, we're gonna have a small piece of tape right here and we're gonna need to remove that on each side. 
So we can just take a flathead screwdriver or whatever you have available to scrape that tape off. And then we can remove the tape. Now we're gonna to need to do that on both sides. Now if we come to our wheel well, if we come to the very center and the very top, we're gonna to have a push pin fastener holding it in right here. Now we're gonna to need to remove that to gain access behind our fender liner on the side of our frame. And then we can get the rest of the clip out. Now we're gonna to need to pull down and loosen our wheel well liner. So if we pull down and away, it'll loosen it up top where it's connected up to the strut. And once we get it a little bit loose, we're gonna to have to pull down and towards the back of our vehicle because we're gonna gain access right in this area. Now once you have it pulled back, you're gonna to wanna to secure it with some kind of strap or something so it doesn't come popping out. I just put a bungee here and then underneath the car to keep my liner pulled back. Now there's gonna be a grommet right here on the side of our frame. We're gonna to need to remove that and you can just grab it with your hands and pull it out. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. Now if we take our rear mounting plate here, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the tab with the two holes on top are facing towards the front. Now we're gonna slide this in place so that it's gonna come out the opening right above our core support here. And then we can line up the hole that we just removed the grommet and that's gonna line up with that back hole right here. Now we're gonna take a half inch by one and a half inch bolt and put a lock washer over it. Now what we're gonna be attaching this to is we're gonna have a lead wire with a nut on the back. We're actually gonna go in the hole that we just removed the tape from and we're gonna thread it into the handle nut that we put in through our core support hole. Now it may take a little bit of maneuvering and a little bit of patience to get everything lined up. Now here in our air deflector, I marked out where we're gonna to need to trim. Now I'm just gonna be using a pair of aviation snips. Now you can use whatever you have available because this just is just some thin cardboard or plastic type material. Once we have this side all trimmed out, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna put our core support and our base plate in place. Now we're gonna to need to reinstall the bumper bolts on top on each side. And we'll put the other side in as well. Now we're gonna line up our main receiver brace with our rear brace back here. And we're gonna take a half inch bolt and we're gonna slide it through from the inside going towards the out. Then we're gonna follow it up with a half inch lock washer and a half inch nut. Now we're gonna have two bolts that we're gonna to have to put in per side and we're gonna go ahead and repeat that. And we'll go ahead and get the other side in place. Now on the side of our frame here, we're gonna have two more holes that we're gonna to need to drill out. Now I'm gonna take a center punch, making it a little bit easier for me to drill my hole and that way I don't have to worry about my drill bit skipping around. And we're gonna center punch the other side as well. Now I do wanna mention on the bottom hole here, we are gonna go through both sides of the frame. Now the top hole, we're only gonna go through to the inside of our frame. And I just wanna to mention to be extra careful when you're drilling. And once you get through one section of the frame, you wanna stop, make sure your drill bit's straight, and then continue. Now that I have my pilot holes drilled, I'm gonna come back and using a half inch drill bit, I'm gonna enlarge my holes. And we're gonna repeat that. But remember, for our lower hole, we're gonna go through both sides of our frame. Now we're gonna repeat that for the other side as well. With all of our holes drilled, we're gonna to need to come back to where our main support brace is gonna to attach to our side plate. Now we're gonna remove the hardware that we installed and we're gonna be removing the main support brace. Now I'm gonna remove the two bolts using a 10 millimeter socket that's holding our bumper core on. Now we're gonna remove our core support and our main brace and set it aside for right now. Now we're gonna take our half inch bolt, the shorter of the ones left in our kit, and we're gonna take a lock washer, and then we're gonna take another one of our handle nuts and we're gonna line it up with the hole on the outside of our brace here, and we're gonna thread the bolt in place. And once we have this bolt threaded in, we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now the lower hole on our side bracket, we're gonna take our half inch by five inch bolt and we're gonna feed it through. 
making sure that we go through both sides of the frame. And on the other side, we're gonna attach a flat plate, followed by a lock washer, and then finally a half inch nut to secure it. Now, you're not gonna be able to see this, but the way I got my plate, lock washer, and nut onto my bolt here is I put my hand underneath, and you can reach the back side of the bolt through here, and just one at a time feed your pieces of hardware in place, and usually it's easier to turn the bolt to get the nut on. Now, we're gonna do that on both sides of our vehicle. So we can go ahead and now put our main support brace and our bumper brace back in place and put the bolts attaching it to our side place in place as well. Now we're gonna start replacing our bumper beam bolts. And if you remember, our horn is gonna go on the top side of our driver side bumper bolt. So we'll get that in place and we can bolt all this back together. To make it a little easier to get our bumper beam bolts back in place, we're gonna remove this clip holding this sensor in place and it's just gonna pop off the plastic section right here. Now, we can sneak our bolts in just using our hand, but to tighten them up, we're gonna need a universal joint and possibly an extension. Now we can get in there and we can tighten up our bolts. And we're gonna repeat that for the other side as well. Now using a three quarter inch socket, I'm gonna torque all my half inch hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. Now we're gonna repeat that for all the remaining hardware. We're gonna release our fender liners and we can push the push pin and fasteners back in place. We're gonna take our ABS anchor point and we can screw it back in and reinstall our ABS wire. And we're gonna do it on the other side as well. We can go ahead and take our airbag sensors, line them up and reinstall the hardware. Now there is a little notch that's gonna keep it in place so that you can get the screw back in place. And again, I'm gonna be using a T25 Torx bit to tighten up that bolt. And we're gonna repeat that for the other airbag sensor as well. Now that our base plate is torqued down, we're gonna start replacing and reinstalling all the panels that we took off. Now on our bumper here, we're gonna to need to cut out a section so our base plate and the arms can attach. Now this yellow paint mark is a general vicinity of how we're gonna to have to cut. Now we may need to trim a little bit more once we test fit it, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this section out. I'm gonna be using a rotary tool, and since this is just plastic, you can use pretty much whatever you have available. And we can come back and clean this up but we're gonna to need to cut this same section out on the other side of our license plate. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna reinstall our fascia and remember to plug in your lights on both sides. Now we're gonna put a few fasteners in so we can make sure that our fascia is gonna stay in place. Now to reinstall our rocker panel, we're gonna to need to remove the white clips that are on the screws on the side of our body. Now once we remove those, we're gonna slide them in to the channel right in correlation to where the post is. We're gonna make sure that circle end is facing towards the post. And we're gonna repeat that for all the rest of our fasteners here. Now if we go to the front, there's a small hook here and we're gonna line it up and gently push and then slide it forward. Now we can gently pull our rocker panel away and if you need to, you might be able to sneak your fingers in there to line up those white clips with the metal post. Now, once they're all lined up, we can go ahead and push firmly. And you also wanna make sure at the back here that it's lined up in the slot it needs to go. I'm gonna start pushing everything in place. So if we twist our drawbar, we can put it in place and it'll lock underneath that tab. Now we can grab our D-ring and our safety chain loop and we can unscrew it. And if we come back right behind where that hole is, where the tab meets out on our arm, we can secure our safety chain loop to our base plate. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. 
And that'll finish up our look at the Roadmaster Easy Base Plate Kit with removable arms, part number 522-85-1 on our 2013 Smart for Two.